Good day and welcome back. Well, today I'd like to talk about typewriter character spacing. How do we measure the spacing of our characters? How wide the line is? How many characters in a given measurement on the line? Whether you're doing imperial measurements, like characters per inch, or you're doing metric measurements, which is how many millimeters per character. Let's talk about measuring the character widths and the line widths of your typewriter. Stay tuned. Well, here in North America, we often talk about typewriter character size in terms of the two most common imperial sizes, which we call pica and elite, which is respectively 10 characters per inch or 12 characters per inch. There are other imperial size measurements like the big six character per inch that you see in some of the Smith Corona typewriters. And also I've seen upwards of 15 characters per inch, really small type. Well, how does that relate to European measurements? Because if you go into some of the details of European type foundries, you'll find that those characters are measured in the reverse order. That is, instead of it being so many characters in a given distance, it it is how much distance per individual character, and instead of using inches, of course, they use millimeters. So if you're a typewriter collector, you might know that you have a machine made in North America with imperial size measurements or imperial size typeface. And if you buy a machine from Europe, it most likely has a metric one. But there are some brands like Royals and uh, Remingtons that might have been made in Europe or might have been made in North America. Sometimes it's hard to tell. So I'm going to show you right now a shortcut way of telling for sure what the size of your type is on your machine. And it might seem a little bit counterintuitive, so I'm going to show you how to measure it and how to calculate it, and then we can get into the details of why that works. So in order to measure our type, we want to, first of all, type a specific number of characters. Secondly, we want to measure those characters, the width of them. And then thirdly, we want to divide or do the math and figure out how many characters in a given distance or how much distance per character, depending on if, whether it's imperial or metric. So the shortcut method that I'm going to teach you is I want you to put a piece of paper into your typewriter and I want you to type 61 periods. Secondly, you're going to measure from the first period to the last period. So from the center of the leftmost period to the center of the rightmost period, you're going to measure that. If it measures exactly four inches, then it is a 15 character per inch imperial measurement. If it measures exactly five inches, it is a 12 character per inch imperial measurement. If it measures exactly six inches, it is a 10 character per inch imperial measurement. And if it measures 10 inches, it is a six character per inch imperial measurement. If it doesn't measure any of those exactly on those inch marks, then you need to measure it in millimeters. And then you will take that millimeter rating and divide by 60 and that will be your metric millimeters per character width. Okay, that's it. That's how you can tell what your typewriter type size is. But you might want to know, how did you arrive at that method, Joe? Why 60 or 61? How does it work? Let's talk about that. So we first need to measure the width of our typing line. So let's start by trying to measure it from the far left edge of the leftmost character to the far right edge of the rightmost character. I'm going to type 10 capital letter M's in a row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to go back to the same starting position and I'm going to type 10 lowercase letter A's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm going to go back to the same starting point and type ten periods. Okay, let's measure the width of each of those typing lines. So I'm going to use a set of calipers set to millimeters. I'm going to start with the capital M's and I'm going to measure from the left edge of the leftmost M to the right edge of the rightmost M. 
to see how long the typing line is. And of course I have to be very precise with it. It's something like 25.05. Then I'm going to measure the width of the lowercase a's in the same way from the left edge of the leftmost a to the right edge of the rightmost a. 24.67. Then I'm going to measure the periods. And I'm going to measure from the middle of the first period to the middle of the last period. And you'll notice that even though we have 10 characters on each of these lines, if we measure from the far left to the far right of that line of characters, the line length varies depending on which character we're using to measure. And so we can see there's a problem when we try to measure the width of the typing line by going from the very left edge of the first character to the very right edge of the last character in the line because the line width will vary depending on which characters you're measuring, their actual widths. So the way to measure the width of the typing line is to measure the center of each letter space. Each field where the letter will be, you want to measure the middle, from the middle of the left one to the middle of the last one on the right. And how do you do that? Well, the best way is to use periods. If you type all periods, then you measure from the middle of the left period to the middle of the right period, you have the width of that typing line of that number of characters. So this bottom line comes closest to representing the actual width of 10 characters on this machine. So I want to talk about how the paper scale on your typewriter has little lines. And a lot of people think that the characters should fit in between the little lines. But this is a manual of the Royal KMM typewriter. And you can see right here, the registration of the center of the letters is vertically in line with the white lines on this scale. So the way typewriters are actually designed is the little marks on your scale should mark the center of of each letter, not in between the letters. And that's important going forward as we look at how to properly measure and count letters on your typing line. So the next thing we need to do in order to figure out how many characters take up how much space on a typing line is we need to count the number of characters that we've typed on that typing line. Here's an experiment. I'm going to type a series of periods. Now this machine is a 10 character per inch PICA US Imperial type size. I'm going to type a series of periods now. Now let's measure them with an inch scale. I'm going to do so by putting my starting point at the first or the leftmost period and counting the number of periods that take up an inch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right here. There are 11 periods to an inch, but wait a minute. I thought this was a 10 character per inch machine. Why the difference? Well, what I have here is a graphical representation of five character spaces on a typing line. We're dealing with, with manual typewriters, monospaced type. Every character's typing area is the same width. In this example, we have five character spaces. And let's say we are going to type a period in all five spaces. So we have five periods in a row like this. The question is, how long is the typing line in terms of character spaces? Well, it might be easy to say, Joe, it's just five characters right there. But what we actually want to know is from the middle of the leftmost character space to the middle of the rightmost character space. We want to know this width in terms of how many characters it is. And in order to do that, now we all of a sudden discover that, hey, wait a minute, this first character on the left, half of that character space we can't count because it's outside of the margins of our typing line. And the same thing with the rightmost character space, we can't count this half a character space either. So what we actually have is one, two, three, three and a half, four. This is four 
character spaces wide, even though there are five characters from the center of the first one to the center of the last one. So this represents a little rule, and that is if you count the number of periods on your typing line, we'll call it the count, minus one equals the number of characters on the actual typing line, because you can't count these two halves out here. That's how we're going to count the number of characters on a typing line. Okay, let's talk about imperial sized typefaces. So they're typically measured in characters per inch or CPI is one way of describing it. And the two most common sizes are 10 characters per inch, which is also called pica. And the other common size is 12 characters per inch, which is commonly called elite. Those are the two most common sizes. So it is the number of characters in unit distance. Now, the European standard for measuring type size is going to be the inverse of this. It is how many millimeters is in one character. You notice it, the character is now in the denominator instead of the numerator. And we also have a conversion factor, though, 25.4 millimeters is one inch. If you were measuring the width of a row of characters and you weren't sure if the typeface was imperial or metric, you could measure it in millimeters. And then if you want to convert it into characters per inch, the American or North American way of representing it, you would invert this number. You would do the number of characters on your typing line divided by the width of the typing line in millimeters, and then you would multiply that by 25.4 millimeters to the inch. Millimeters cancels, you have characters per inch. So let's get an example here. So here's an example of my Olympia SM9. I typed out 61 periods, and I measured those at 156 millimeters and 60 characters, and that works out to 2.6 millimeters per character, which is the European way of representing the size of type. But let's convert it to the American in terms of characters per inch. So what we want to do is 60 divided by 156 times 25.4. 60, enter, 156, divide, 25.4 times, and that's 9.769, call it 77 characters per inch. And by the way, I measured my Groma Calibri. It also came out to 156 millimeters for 60 characters, or 2.6 millimeters per character, as did my Royal Mercury. And now, I just measured my Hermes rocket. And these are the 61 periods that I typed with the Hermes rocket, and this measures exactly 150 millimeters. And that is 2.5 millimeters per character. What is that in the American standard? Well, that would be the inverse of this fraction, so 60 over 150 times 25.4, and that is 10.1 six characters per inch. So it's pretty close to pica. Not exactly, but pretty close. Well, I was curious about my Hermes 3000s. I have three of them. The oldest one measured 120 millimeters, comes out to two millimeters per character, or if you convert it to imperial, it's 12.7 characters per inch. The middle Hermes 3000 measured, actually the middle and the later one both measured 150 millimeters, and that comes comes out to 2.5 millimeters per character, which is 10.16 characters per inch. Then a few more typewriters. So the Princess Exemplar 300, it measured 138 millimeters, which is 2.3 millimeters per character, which is 11.04 characters per inch. The Splendid 33 was the same at 2.3. The Singer Graduate, which is the same as a Remington Monarch made in France, turned out to be 10 characters per inch. It was exactly six inches, and that converts
hertz to 2.54 millimeters per character in metric. Okay, for the Olivetti Studio 44, the 61 periods measured 134 millimeters, which equates to 2.23 millimeters per character, which converts to 11.37 characters per inch. So now we're going to talk about what is the optimal number of characters to type to test out for how large your characters are. That's a good question. The more characters you type, the longer the typing line, the more accurate it'll be. But I want to suggest to you, first of all, if you don't know whether your machine is imperial or metric, if it's imperial, the two most common sizes are 10 and 12 characters per inch. And 10 and 12 both are common factors of 60. So this is why I suggest you type 60 whole characters, which is typing 61 periods. We talked about that earlier. If you measure it and it comes out to be exactly five inches long, then that is a 12 character per inch typeface or elite. 12 times five is 60. If it turns out to be six inches, then that is a 10 character per inch machine. And if it's neither of those, if it's some irregular inch measurement, then it's probably metric and you're going to go ahead and measure it again in metric and come up with your metric measurement, which instead of characters per unit length is unit length in millimeters per character. This is why I recommend typing 61 periods in a row in order to accurately measure your typeface. Okay, this chart is all of the typewriters that I measured from the Olympia SM9 all the way down to the Olivetti Studio 44. The second column is I measured the 61 periods typed with each machine. I measured the width of that in millimeters, and those are all the measurements there. And then the third column is I calculated the metric dimensions of the characters by dividing this second column number by 60. And then I also calculated the imperial dimensions here on the fourth column and the two machines that were natively imperial are the Smith Corona Silent and the Singer Graduate highlighted in yellow here. All the others highlighted in pink are natively metric machines. As far as the European metric sizes, just ignoring the two American ones here, we see 2.23, 2.3 and 2.5, 2.0 and 2.6 are all the common sizes that I've measured in the metric sizing. So this chart here is all those data points of all the typewriters. This is imperial on the x-axis versus metric on the y-axis. For instance, if you go up here to this data point here, this is a larger size type, which gives it less characters per inch on the imperial side. And conversely down here, here, this character is a small measurement which equates to a large number of characters per inch on the imperial scale. So there is this inverse function going on between the imperial and the metric. And you can see the distribution of character sizes for all those typewriters that I measured. Well, that was a fun overview of the type size of typewriters. I had a lot of fun making this video. You should be able to type the 61 periods, measure from the first to the last, and then do the math real quickly, and that'll tell you your type size. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to put a comment down below. I'd love to talk to you about them. And as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.